what's up guys back again now while my black outclad is drying um i basically thought oh, i've got a vat full of well not full of it's got some white resin in it right so i figured you know what now it's pretty good time for me to mix something i've got these leftover kind of paints and random things i bought from that culture hustle website like whatever i've got snow phase the the, the pinkest pink powder the, the glowiest glow powder you know the this is dangerous. This is like a whole vat of different coloured glitters. If I open that, then it's just gonna go. It just goes. It just goes everywhere because it's not that well packaged. I'm sorry, Stuart, but um, yeah, it's dangerous to open this in in your house. It's like a glitter bomb, basically. <laughs> and you just open it, and it just goes all over the place. Right. So um, the diamond dust. I think I'm gonna write that off because that is tiny fragments of glass, and glass on an FEP isn't gonna be the best idea. Right. So that's. That's good. That's straight away. No, no. Now snow is not what you think it is. It's actually extremely gentle, kind of like white glitter. So um, that is a possibility. That might make the white kind of look sparkly from the outside. So that's a possibility. The lit. The problem is these days all lights are LED, so they don't actually. I mean, let's see. Look, I'm just gonna hold this under a light for a bit see what happens when I turn the lights off because um, with the regular incandescent lights I think it glows like hell but with these ones no not really a little bit but nowhere near as much as I'd like it to so essentially it'd just be white so I'm not gonna bother with that one which leaves me with the pinkiest pink, which might be interesting, but then again, it's just going to be pink, so that's no. So I'm not going to do the glitter either. So that leaves snow and phase. Now phase is basically purple that goes to pink when you heat it. And um, because I actually like the colour purple, I think I'm going to go for phase. Um, I don't know if I might, <laughs> I might put some snow in there just for shits and giggles. These are all powders and they're really fine, so... Um, I'm just going to stir them in with a little electronic stirrer, like a tea stirrer. And yeah, this one, I might as well show you that as well. It's like, it's ultra fine. It's like super fine glitter. It's like, you know, it's the kind of stuff you get in, um, I don't know, it reminds me of what you get in like sun cream. I borrowed some sun cream off a girl once and then I wondered why I was glittering all over. It just seemed like, it seems like that kind of stuff when it's just constantly sparkling even after you wipe it off your fingers and stuff. So anyway, that's my plan. This is the stir I'd be using. So I'll just put it in the vat and go brrrr. As for the snow, I didn't. I decided not to add it in because um, I don't think it would have added that much. And then I don't really want sparkly items anyway. And because the flakes have got one particular, you know, they're, they're quite basically tiny circles. Every time the build plate goes down they're all going to be flat so um it's not going to look as cool as it is in here so i can be can be bothered with that so um feel free to go and experiment if you want all right so basically this is what i ended up with um it was a failure the first time around however i have a feeling it could be something to do with the way i mixed the um this phase stuff into the uh white resin that I had because um if you look at the bottom if you check out that check out these glowing dots I got on there I don't I'm, I'm like <laughs> why have I got dots in there this should be like just purple it shouldn't have um resin in there but as you can see from the edges you know it, it still works so um at the end of the day you kind of if you've seen that movie the abyss if you kind of hold this like for a little bit not in the way sorry there you go it kind of uh Looks like those floating aliens from the abyss, if you've ever seen the abyss. It's just got this really nice kind of, really pleasant colour to it basically. Um, so I've just got my UV torch from the back, in case you're wondering how I'm getting it to glow like that. So yeah, that's kind of a, a nice kind of look. But yeah, basically the main problem I had was that I mixed it in a really ghetto style with a... I just literally started pouring in that kind of pigment because I was like, yeah, this isn't going to work. And obviously I didn't kind of 
disperse the pigment enough because I can tell here from the edge like right here I can see I've got one of those little red dots and that means obviously when it's printing as it's pulling up it didn't adhere there and then obviously unpeeled it and left that one on the on the table and then just carried on going up 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 that's why it's got that weird edge and then it just didn't finish the rest. I was really depressed actually, I thought it failed and it wouldn't ever work. And I thought maybe it's a temperature thing, but it's nothing to do with temperature. You can print at the usual settings of all the other, um, your usual 2.5 or whatever it is that you print out if you're using a, one of those mono screens. So yeah, there you have it. I'm gonna show you some cool prints now. So this is one of my Inca planes, as you saw. I'm, I've left the supports on this one. Prints all the detail, really nice quality, pretty much identical to all my standard prints. There you go. Does look quite funky in my opinion. This is quite a nice colour change effect as well. I did put quite a lot of pigment pigment in because I wanted it I wanted it to I didn't want it to be like a cheap version of what it could be. I thought I'd put in as much as I could just so that it would have the maximum effect. But yeah, I'm super happy with this one. And there you go, after a little bit of touching. Quite cool, I think. So yeah, um, it does hang about quite a lot, that kind of effect. And once you've obviously semi-warmed it up, the rest of it warms up even quicker. So it kind of just gets hot pink really quickly if you've already kind of started it. But yeah, that's really cool. I'm really happy with the effect. Um, it looks quite wicked, especially for photographs and stuff like that. Maybe for films or something, I don't know, whatever. It does look cool. There's loads of different pigments available. Maybe not from that Culture Hustle website, but there are loads of websites on eBay where you can just buy all the different colored pigments, I think, you know. If you remember Global Hypercolor, they did that T-shirts with this stuff, but obviously it works in resin as well. So I'll show you another print now. The plane was solid, this one is hollow, and this is at 0.1 or 1.7 millimeters thickness, and it, it changes quite quickly, so if I, if I just keep it in my hand for a little bit, one, two, three, four, five six seven eight and then you've got quite a wicked change there so um yeah it's pretty fun i think it suits this face pretty well actually so um i'm really happy with the way it came out anyway that's my little quick video i thought i'd share that with you because it is a super kind of fun effect and rather than like the boring stuff like glowing in the dark and stuff it's like you know you can enjoy this in the daytime and you can pretty much give it to your kids, possibly. I don't know how safe it is, but um, yeah, I think it's quite cool. It's good fun anyway for me. I do enjoy it quite a lot. And I'm super happy that it worked out and I didn't waste a vat of uh, white resin. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you like it, subscribe and uh, yeah, catch up for more. See you later.